Hey guys, this is Down Phoenix, and welcome to another episode of the Down Phoenix Show. Today, we're going to talk about a subject that I was tagged in by YouTuber Heavy Metal Gamer. I'm glad to see that he um, was able to recognize my channel, and I appreciate that. I've actually just recently started watching his channel myself, and he's got some pretty good content. I'm gonna definitely have to keep an eye on it and see what else he's got, but I really have enjoyed it so far. Uh, so again, thank you very much for the shout out. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and get onto the topic that he brought up, and this is about what are our five most nostalgic games. Now, you see some footage here for Soul Blazer for the Super Nintendo, which um, I'm actually doing a test recording with uh, using scan lines and things like that from SNES 9X to try to give it a little bit more of a look like it would on the TV. But anyways, this is actually not one of the games. This is one of dozens and dozens of games that would have been nice to make on a list, but unfortunately they're just not, it's not in the top five, unfortunately. So this is kind of like a honorable mention. It's probably in the top uh, 20 or 30 or something like that. You know, it's just, it's a random game that I remember playing a lot as a kid. And so I figure, well, I might as well show some footage, right? I mean, that's what this is all about. It's all about having great and fun video game experiences. So, let's go ahead and get right into it, shall we? So, I'm going to admit uh, something here. Most of my games are going to be pretty heavily skewed on the Nintendo side. And obviously, they're all going to be really old games. As a matter of fact, the newest game on that list is actually number five. And it's also the only non-Nintendo... Or actually, no, um, there is actually a game that's a little bit newer. Now that I remember now. Um, so it's a pretty recent game as far as the rest of them in comparison, but it's still early 90s, so it's still a really old game. Uh, when I think of nostalgia, I definitely think of games that I you know, fondly remember that I can still remember the game itself. I can remember the story, the music, the graphics. Like, it's just absolutely no effort at all. It just pops immediately into my head as soon as I even think about the game and I remember it so vividly that whenever I look back at it like when I actually go back to play the game I actually remember it perfectly you know I like I didn't have like any kind of memory where I thought it was like this but whenever I actually go back and replay it it's like oh well actually, I don't remember that being in there or that's not how I thought it was or you know something like that so, this is a very challenging list because there are literally dozens of games that I hold nostalgic. You know, I'm a huge gamer. But, number five is the only Sega game on this list and also the only non-Nintendo game on this list. And that game is Golden Axe. The first Golden Axe. Now, I will be honest, I like Golden Axe 2 more. That's definitely the best of the trilogy. But... Golden Axe is just a really nostalgic game for me, you know, it was the only Golden Axe game I owned as a kid. And it was also really the first game that I played that was not Nintendo or Atari on a home console that I really enjoyed. Uh, because I had a friend uh, back in elementary school, I was in second grade, uh, his name was Christopher. And funny story about me and Christopher is uh, we became friends after we fought. Uh, so uh, we played this game called Handball back in the day, and basically it's like a little rubber ball that you hit back and forth uh, with your fist. Like, you know, I would take, I would hit the ball, and then they would take a turn to hit the ball and so on. And the objective is to hit it to where um, the other person misses it. You know, it, that's kind of like the thing. You know, you got to like, it, it's kind of like racquetball in a way, except it's with your hands, hence the term handball. Uh, so anyways, uh, I was almost the best player handball in school. Christopher was the best, though. Um, he would always beat me. <laughs> and uh, one day I just got really pissed off and I, I punched him, you know. <laughs> and, uh, you know, he had to go to the nurse, which, ironically enough, the nurse was his mom. Now, I also got hurt in the altercation as well. Uh, not quite as bad as him. It wasn't like a serious fight. It wasn't like we, you know, like ripped into each other. It was just a few punches, you know, it wasn't anything serious. And, um, you know, it's kind of funny because, you know, me me and his mom were talking like after this thing, you know, and, and you know, we were just talking about it and like, we're wondering why, 
you know, why, uh, why are you guys fighting? You know, what's up with that? You know, I was just, you know, talking about, you know, I was just upset. I'll, you know, it doesn't seem like I can ever beat him, even though I try really hard. And, you know, I always worked really hard at it. And, uh, you know, we, I don't know how the, how the conversation even got started, but, you know, one of the things we talked about is, um, you know, you, you, you got like, Nintendo games, right? Like, of course, you know, and, uh, so I actually was invited over to his house, um, by his mom to uh, play Nintendo games. And if I remember right, um, it was like just shortly after that they got rid of their Nintendo and they sold all their games. And, you know, I rented a copy of Castlevania 3 and I was, you know, bring it over. You know, this time we were actually good friends at this time, you know, so I brought a copy of Castlevania 3 over to, to you know, play with them. But, you know, he had the Sega Genesis. He had the Model 1 Sega Genesis. So I guess I don't know exactly what the deal was, but him and his family traded the game uh, in. You know, they traded their games in for Nintendo. They got rid of their Nintendo. So obviously we couldn't play Castlevania, but, you know, we played a whole bunch of uh, Sega games there. And one of the Sega games uh, that he had was Golden Axe. And this was the game that made me want to get a Sega Genesis. And it was actually several years later that I actually ended up getting one. This was in early 1990, uh, bear in mind. So the Sega Genesis was still really new. Uh, on the market, I think it had been out for maybe four or five months, something like that at this time here in North America. And uh, I know I didn't really say much about Golden Axe, but that's just, I mean, when I think of Golden Axe, I think of Christopher, I think of that story. That's another thing to keep in mind about games that you are got on your top nostalgic games list. You have to be games that actually have a story behind how you got introduced to them, why you enjoy them. That's something I think that's really important. Um, so now that we've got all the introductions and whatnot out of the way, we're going to go ahead and move on to number four. And that is going to be Super Mario Kart. Now, Super Mario Kart was a staple of my childhood, as well as a lot of people uh, from back in the day. That game came out in 1992. I don't remember exactly when we got the game, but it was fairly around that time. You know, like it had to have been no more than a few months after it came out. It's really tough to remember because back in those days, you didn't really buy games on release date. You know, you bought them at various times. And, uh, you know, oftentimes we might not even got the game in our home market until several months after it was actually officially released because, you know, we had Walmart back then. We had Walmart and Grandpa's and that was it for game shopping. And they weren't always uh, the best at that. We didn't have GameStop or Funko Land or... Uh, Toys R Us or anything like that in our area. So, you know, obviously we got what we got, you know, in Super Mario Kart. Because we had such a limited selection of games, we played the hell out of that game, and it was just so memorable. Um, I just have a lot of memories revolving around Super Mario Kart, uh, namely around playing with various people in my life, you know, playing uh, with my brother, playing with my cousin, um, playing with uh, my cousin's uh, husband, which uh, sadly he passed away. Actually, there was a, some kind of bad uh, times with that particularly. Um, there is kind of weird altercation between me and him. Uh, after he beat me in a game of Mario Kart. And I guess I was just kind of pissy about it because I was really good at the game. You know, I would have such awesome track times. Um, but, you know, there was a lot of good times. There was that one bad time that I could think of around the game. But I think that's part of what makes that game so memorable. You know, it's, it's so memorable. So memorable is that, you know, there's just so much attached to that game. Um, the game itself is obviously very good. I love Super Mario Kart, but... It's not really so much about the game that brought the memories. It was about playing together. And that was just a game we loved to play, all of us. You know, that was a game that was very universal. I played it with a lot of my friends. You know, it's just a great game to play uh, with people. And so there was another game that I have to associate with just as much, if not more, memories. And that's number three. And that is Contra, the original Contra. I remember playing Contra all the way back in the arcades. You know, they, we actually lived at a, uh, like a mobile home park or something like that in Bakersfield. And right across from the train tracks, there was a uh, convenience store or something. And we lived like right next to the train tracks, you know, so we just, it was a short walk, you know, it was like less, uh, like maybe a minute walk, if that even. 
Uh, but we, we used to go there and play Contra all the time, me and my brother. And uh, that was just an excellent game. And then I don't remember when exactly, but at some point later, we actually got the NES cart. And that game was played extensively. You know, that was a game that would be played for several days at a time. Uh, trying to master it, you know, reading Nintendo Power, getting the Konami code. Um, that's probably the earliest memory I have of a video game cheat code, is a Konami code. Being used in Contra so you can get to 30 lives, so that you can have enough lives to make it through the game. Now, I've gotten better in over time, and I actually can sometimes get through Contra with just three lives. You know, sometimes. You know, it has to be a good day, but I can do it. And uh, maybe one of these days I'd like to do a Let's Play and, you know, do one of those uh, playthroughs. But um, that was a game that we would just play with everybody. All my friends, you know, neighborhood kids, uh, my brother and his friends. You know, it was just... That was, for me, the quintessential uh, multiplayer game uh, experience that I've had in my childhood. So, we're going to move on to the final two games now. Uh, the first one, which is number two, obviously is the game that sealed the deal for me with role-playing games. Obviously, I am here playing Soul Blazer, which it doesn't even compare to this game and how nostalgic this game is. And that game is the original Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy 1 for the NES. Um, this game was introduced to me by Nintendo Power. Nintendo Power discussed this game extensively. Um, they would rave about this game. They acted like it was the greatest thing ever. And because I was a faithful Nintendo Power subscriber, I listened to him. However, it kind of brings me to a really funny point. And this is one of the reasons why Final Fantasy is such a nostalgic game for me. is because I made a mistake as a kid of not buying Final Fantasy. But I bought a different game. So I'll explain. Uh, this was early 1990. And at this time, that's, you know, around the game time... Around the time the game came out was in the early 1990. And um, another thing that happened in the early 1990s is the Disney cartoons like DuckTales and Chip Dale's Rescue Rangers and so on. And I was a big fan of those. I will watch those whenever I got home from school, you know, like usually like, I mean, I was addicted to those shows. Like usually I would actually, whenever I got home from, you know, I went, I got off school, I go straight home. Watch those cartoons and then maybe go to the friend's house or whatever, you know, because I love watching those cartoons. And it wasn't that big a deal because they all watched it too, you know, I mean, I guess we could have hung out together and watched the show, but for some reason, that never really happened, you know, because when we were together, we would, you know, play or play video games or something like that instead, you know, um, things that are more interactive, you know, we didn't really watch TV together. But, uh, you know, anyways, I don't know if it was my birthday or what. It was some kind of occasion, and my parents let me buy a video game. Uh, just, just brand new video game. We were at Target, and, um, you know, I was eyeing Final Fantasy as well as Chip and Dale's Rescue Rangers. My fanboydom of that TV show outweighed my fanboydom of Nintendo Power. And even though Chip and Dale's Rescue Rangers was a great game... It was probably my most regrettable game purchase I've ever made uh, because of the impact that the game eventually did have on me, you know, as uh, as a gamer. You know, I've been such a huge RPG nut. Once I finally got to play it about a year or so later, um, it was after we moved from California to Missouri because I used to live in California as a kid and then we moved to Missouri. I've been in Missouri basically since. Uh, but... Um, and, and, you know, whenever I finally did get to play, I was just so hooked on RPGs. It wasn't my first RPG, y'all, bear in mind. I've played games like uh, Dragon Warrior, Ultima, Quest of the Avatar, I believe that was on the uh, NES. Um, it's basically the NES version of U Ultima 4. And I also played Wizardry, Wizardry 2, you know, just, just some different RPG games like that. But Final Fantasy was the one that I think really sealed the deal. That was the one that made me an extensive RPG nut. It made me seek out RPG games, and so that's why it's so nostalgic. Now, here's the final game on the list. I don't think this one will really surprise anybody, uh, because this is probably the most nostalgic game for probably about at least 70% of the people of my age that played video games as a kid. Um, and that game was Super Mario Brothers Duck Hunt. Wow. What a killer 
killer console pack-in. I don't think there's ever been a console pack-in that was nearly as important and revered as Super Mario Duck Hunt. Um, obviously, there's Wii Sports, and maybe, heck, you never know, maybe 15, 20 years from now, people will talk so fondly about Wii Sports in the same manner that I talk about Super Mario Brothers. Now, is Super Mario Brothers the greatest Mario game? No, not even remotely. But you just have to realize the impact and nostalgia that that game has. You know, you, like I said, you, you just remember what the theme song sounds like. You know what the Goombas look like, the Turtles. Um, you remember the power-ups, you know, it, it's just such a memorable game. Even if it's not necessarily the best game ever made, although it's definitely up there. Um, it's just, it's probably the most memorable game. Um, that's probably ever existed, honestly, you know, I mean... I mean, if you asked anybody in any age group, and you tallied up the numbers, that's probably gonna be the number one game. I would be surprised if it's not. Now, I might be wrong, and I guess, you know, if you count people that live in areas where it never came out originally, like China and, and so on, you know, yeah, okay, if we count those numbers, maybe it's not the most remembered game of all time. Um, or maybe you can argue, well, maybe it's like Pac-Man or, um, you know, something like that instead, which, I mean, is very likely, I suppose, too. But, you know, it is the most memorable game for me, and it just did so much for the gaming industry as a whole. Um, I, I really don't know what else to say, you know, it's probably one of the most important video games to ever be released. And, like, Final Fantasy sealed the deal for me on being an RPG gamer. Super Mario Brothers sealed the deal for me on being a gamer, period. Uh, because it's not even remotely the first game I played. Uh, but it was probably the first game I played on the NES. You know, we actually had an Atari 2600 as a kid. And there were a couple of games on there, like uh, the original Pac-Man release, which is terrible, of course, looking back, as well as um, Air Sea Battle, which uh, those were the two v first video games I ever remembered. Uh, but I don't really attach the same emotional impact uh, with those kinds of games that I did with Super Mario Brothers. You know, like those were games, those were fun, whatever, you know. I was a kid, you know, you you did, you played video games or, you know, like, oh, look, pretty lights on the TV screen. That's cool. Uh, <laughs> well, that's not really what you think when you're a two or three year old kid. But, um, but yeah, Super Mario Brothers, it was just something special. And that is my most nostalgic game ever. So let's go ahead and wrap things up now. Okay, so we're going to wrap things up by tagging some YouTubers to make their own video responses to this topic of what their top five most nostalgic games ever are. Again, I was tagged by Heavy Metal Gamer. Check out his channel in the description below. Also, don't forget to check out the channels of the people that I'm about to uh, mention. Some of these you guys might already be familiar with. Some of you guys actually are fans of the show, so... Uh, you're probably, you know, wondering, hey, you know, I'm, <laughs> you know, I, you already got all my fans pretty much and, you know, whatever. <laughs> so anyways, uh, the first person I want to tag is my good old YouTube buddy, Wizwar100, aka Lazy Works Creations. Or Lazy Work Creations, not Lazy Works Creations. I'd like to tag him. I want, I want to see what he's got to say on this topic. Um, I would also like to tag Detenshi Reinhardt who, um, he won a copy of Gears 3 from me. I'm still waiting for him to get a hold of me about that. I don't know what's going on with him. But I'd love to see what he's got to say. And I kind of miss uh, seeing him uploading videos on YouTube as much as uh, he used to. But I totally get it because, you know, he's got, you know, he's got his daughter now and all this stuff. He's got his family going, so. But if he has the time, Detenshi, uh, do make sure to uh, do your own video response. Uh, we're also going to go ahead and tag... Uh, Dark Wolf Let's Play. Uh, he's a YouTube channel that uh, I remember from a long time ago. He's actually known by another name. Uh, you guys might know him as Koi Kutsune. And he's been actually pretty successful in the Let's Play scene. And uh, I kind of enjoy his Let's Play content. I haven't watched it as much as I used to. Uh, but I try to keep up with him and uh, see what's going on. Maybe we'll get around and do some co-op games together like we have in the past on this channel, obviously, so I'd like to see what he's got to say on this subject. I also want to hear from 16KTS Gamma. Now, 
he doesn't upload much anymore besides, uh, you know, videos with Smash Brother clips and things like that. But I'd really love to see what KTS has to say. You know, he has been a longtime viewer and friend on the YouTube community for me, and I'd love to see his thoughts on this. You know, I think he's a little bit younger, so I think his games might be a little more Nintendo 64-ish or something like that. And that'd be really interesting to see. I want to see what kind of selections he's got. Uh, no, I also want to want to bring up Jojamon Returns 91, another longtime friend and viewer of the channel. Uh, Jojamon has done some pretty cool videos. He also does music uh, remixes and things like that, uh, which I only recently, I guess, remember him doing, like, because he did some kind of thing with Blink-182 or in some game, or I don't know what it was, but it was kind of cool, you know. And so, don't forget to check his channel out as well in the description below. And um, for anybody else, don't forget to check these guys out, and thank you very much for watching. And if you want to share some nostalgic games in the comments below, uh, feel free to do so. Uh, so thank you for tuning into the Down Phoenix Show. Uh, but till then, Down Phoenix out.